So this is where we left last week. And I told you that I'd continue working on the artwork for last week's tutorial and also for this week's tutorial. And while trying to dial in the look of this weird pillow that we stitched together, I augmented our setup quite a bit in order to drive the wrinkliness of the whole pillow. The way I did that was to force those points close to the seams that we stitched in there to have a smaller rest length. That means to keep a smaller distance between them than those points farther away here in order to generate this really highly inflated look that I was after. So here's how I did this. My initial grid is still set to 200 by 200, which is high. It takes a bit longer to simulate, but gives me the detail that I required for the artwork. And what I want to do is I want to take those selections we did up here, the stitch top and stitch bottom, and select the constraints that are attached to these points in order to drive their rest length. And the rest length determines, depending on which constraints rest length you're working on, how far those points can be apart, or how strong the pressure is on those points, or how far they're allowed to bend. All this is driven by the rest length attribute, with the individual effect being dependent on the vellum constraint type with which the individual constraints have been created. And vellum works like this. So let's drag this down and separate our setup into constraints up here and the solver down here. So vellum has these three streams. First one is the geometry we're simulating. So in our case, it's this sheet. Second one is the constraints that define how those individual geometry points of our main sheet here behave in the simulation. And a third one are collider objects, of which we don't have any currently. And in order to drive the rest length of a constraints, I'll be working on the constraints here. That's the second geometry stream here. So let's attach a null to this and wire the middle stream in here. So when I middle mouse now, I can see my constraints geometry stream here, which has those two groups, a bend and a stretch group, selecting the bend and stretch constraints respectively, then a few primitive attributes, and we're namely interested in the rest length and the rest length origin. That means rest length original. We've got a stiffness and a string encoding what kind of constraint type we have there. When we have a look at the geometry spreadsheet and go to the primitives tab here, we can see all of those attributes listed here. In our current setup, we have three types of constraints. The distance, keeping these points apart or together, so forming the fabric of our pillow. Then if we scroll down, the bend constraints, driving how stiff or how flexible, how bendy our cloth behaves. And finally, down here, we've got two pressure constraints. One constraint per sheet that drives the inflation of my pillow. And for the setup and planning, I'm only interested in my distance constraints here. Consequentially, what I want to do on my constraint geo stream here is select all the points that are either in the stitch top or stitch bottom group, such as visualized here, or on those edges where we stitched the sheets together. Sadly, those groups do not come over into our primitive stream that makes the constraints. Those are solely on the geo stream, on the first stream here in the vellum, those point groups here. So what I want to do on my primitive stream that makes up the constraints is bring over those point groups from this stream. And to bring over those groups, I'm going to use a group transfer node, which has two input slots, one for the geometry to which we want to apply the groups and one for the geometry from which we want to copy or bring over those groups. So let me highlight this and maybe to visualize this, attach a color node and set this color to red. And in my group transfer node, let's uncheck primitive and edge groups and just select the point groups we want to bring over. And yeah, this is a UI bug, but it's the edge top, edge bottom and stitch bottom and stitch top group. So when we middle mouse on this, we can now see we brought over those point groups and to visualize them, what I can do in my color node here is just select them again. So here they are, we brought over all those point groups. However, when we middle mouse on the group transfer here, we can see we have point groups now. However, the attributes we want to drive rest length using rest length original here are primitive attributes. So let's convert those point groups into primitive groups using a group promote, which I'll attach down here and highlight. And I would like to convert from point to primitive groups using the edge as well as the stitch groups, which we transferred up here. So now we can see they are being brought over into primitive groups. So if we zoom in, we can see now those individual primitive lines connecting the individual points and constraining them together are now selected. Next, let's kind of drag down this vellum solver here to make a bit more space and combine all these four groups that we have here into one single group that specifies all the primitives that we want to work on using a group combine like this. And we want to work on primitive groups now. And let's create a new group called do or work or whatever. And it should be equal to first edge group and our second edge group and our first stitch group and our last stitch group like this. Let's highlight this and just again, use our color node here, this time set to primitives. And let's just color everything that is in the do group. 
which clearly did not work. As we can see here, we have zero primitives in this group. So let's see where we went wrong. And of course, I shouldn't have chosen the intersect function, but the union like so. Yeah. Again, if we middle mouse on this group combine here, we now have our do group. So we selected every primitive on which we want to work. However, I only want to work on the stretch constraints. So I do not want to influence the bendiness of my sheets, the flexibility of the cloth that my pillow is made out of. I only want to drive how far the cloth can stretch in certain areas. So what I have to do is I have to intersect my do and my stretch group, again, using another group combine, wiring this in and setting this to run over primitives. And I want to have my do group, which equals to my current do group, intersected with my stretch group. So let's highlight this middle mouse on this. And now I've only got 13,000 primitives left compared to the 30 something thousand primitives I had previously. All right, let's finally set the rest length scales on our do group and on the rest of the geometry using two primitive wrangles. One which I'll run over the do group, setting the rest length equal to the original rest length times 0 0.25. So they contract quite a bit to only a quarter of the original length. Let's just copy this node and paste it down here and set this node to run over everything but the do group. So any other constraints and multiply their rest length times 1.5 like so. And finally, wire these constraints, these modified constraints into our vellum solver like so. So that's what we built and we can get rid of this null. We do not like this, get a bit more compact and also this color for visualization. We do not need this anymore. Let's move this up, clean this up a bit. Let's save this, reset this, highlight our vellum solver, keep our fingers crossed and simulate this. This is somewhat working. I think we're constraining those stitched areas together well. However, the pressure constraint as we dialed it in when we left last time is not set up as I want. So let's get up here and dial in those values in our constraints. Let's just reset the solver here. Let's highlight the vellum cloth first and just go over those settings and compare against to the settings that I found out for my artwork. So I set the initial edge length scale to 1.5 and set my stiffness to 10 times 1 to the power of 10, damping ratio to 0 0.1 and rest length scale to 0 0.8. Let's have a look at the vellum pressure constraint here. And I dialed back its stiffness to 1 with a damping ratio of 0 0.01 and a rest length scale of 30. Finally, the weld constraint, I think that's fine as it is. Let's just check my vellum solver itself. And all I did here is add a ground position at minus 0 0.8 along the Y axis and added a tiny bit of gravity, just minus one along the Y axis. Also in the simulation tab, I increased the cache memory so I wouldn't run out of cache. Let's again save this, highlight our vellum solver, keep the fingers crossed and re-simulate. And that's already looking a good bit closer to the look of my artwork. The only thing that I might want to do is increase the width of my stitches here by expanding this do group that I created up here. And to do so, I'll have to work on my point group before I promote this to become these primitives groups here. What I want to do here is switch around the order of operations a bit. So before I promote all those individual point groups to primitives and then combining them into a single do group, let me just create this group combine here, creating the do group and move that out here before the group promote and set this up to run over points. So later what I want to do is I only want to promote my do point group that I created up here and promote this to primitives. However, what this allows me to do now that my do group is on the point level is I can drop down a group expand, wire this in here, highlight it, set this to be point groups running over my do group and the output should be do as well. And as you can see, I now can expand this group by dialing in those expansion steps here. And I think a single step is enough. So after we expanded this group, we promote it to primitives, then do the intersection with our stretch constraints and then set our primitive attributes again. So let's re-simulate this, just resetting the scene and hitting play. All right, the look of the simulation looks really promising. I really quite like that here. And what you might want to do now as the simulation is a bit heavy and takes quite a while to simulate is drop down a file cache and maybe wire that in after the vellum post process here and save this whole simulation to disk. So as you can see down here, that will take its time as well. One thing you might have noticed and that bugs me a bit is that this whole simulation thing is sliding out of frame upwards here. And yes, I could dial in a few parameters in my simulation, 
or dynamically set those to get rid of this sliding behavior. However, what I want to show you in the next tutorial is a technique that can be applied post simulation without having to resim your whole scene. However, that's a technique for next week. But if you want to learn even more vellum in between or get some insight into vex or volumes or particles, or just want to plainly support us, you might want to consider subscribing to our Patreon. And a huge thank you to all you guys supporting us out there, especially to important looking pirates, Patrick Fillion, Chris Hebert and Rafik Anadol. Thanks so much, guys. So until next week, it's cheers and goodbye.